OK, well, the government says it's now down to Buckingham Palace to decide whether the controversial Koh Noor diamond should be used in the coronation of Camilla, the Queen Consort. Who would have thought this would be the most controversial thing about Camilla becoming Queen? Anyway, the gem was the star feature of the Queen Mother's coronation crown she wore in 1937. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's governing party is said to be concerned that the diamond, which was given to Queen Victoria by the East India Company in the 19th century, would revive unwelcome memories of the British Empire. For who? No one would have known about it unless they just brought it up. Anyway, options now can include removing the diamond or Camilla could opt not to wear the crown altogether. Bonkers stuff. I'm joined now by royal broadcaster and historian Rafe Hadel Manku. Rafe, why is this even a thing? Who cares whether or not we upset Modi? I mean, he's not been around anywhere near as long as that crown. Well, yes, I mean, ultimately, this is mischief making by uh, Modi, the uh, India's government. It's a Hindu nationalist government. Uh, increasingly uh, obsessed about identity issues and the state and promoting uh, patriotism in, in the country. And of course, currently going through very uh, delicate trade negotiations with the British government. And of course, this follows on from Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, making incendiary comments, at least that's how they were received in India, about the tendency of Indian migrants to this com com country coming here as students on visas and not going back as soon as they should. And so it can't be any coincidence that it's only a day or two after India protested Suella Braverman's comments about Indian migrants that we're getting this story about the infamous Kohinoor diamond. I mean, realistically, wouldn't it be absolutely staggering for the coronation of a monarch of this country and the Queen Consort to have anything dictated to it, really, by another nation? Well, of course, I mean, the Kohinoor diamond is an extremely important um, symbol in India. But the problem with it is that it ha doesn't really, there's no country in the world that can actually make a claim of ironclad ownership over it. It's had a very long and bloody history, and it's been owned by a succession of empires. So it's gone from the Mughal Empire to the Persian Empire of Iran, to the Durrani Empire of, of Afghanistan, then to the Sikh Empire, and finally to the British Empire. So it's very convoluted. Its last owner was the Maharaja Dilip Singh of the Punjab, who's actually Sikh, not a part of the Hindu state. India didn't exist at the time that the diamond was actually uh, taken by the British from uh, Dilip Singh, who was only a boy at the time. It was signed over by a treaty, uh, but it, you know, quite controversially it was done. But, uh, you know, that part of it, India, or the, the, the Sikh state, is actually in modern-day Pakistan. So Pakistan lays claim to it. The Afghanis and the Taliban have laid claim to it from the time when they owned it. You now have the Indians laying claim to it. Iran has a claim to it. So I think it's best off left where it actually is, in the crown of the Queen Consort, where it's being honoured quite rightly. Uh, every consort since Queen Alexandra, Edward VII's uh, wife, has been crowned with their own unique crown, bearing the Kohenor diamond. For obvious cost reasons today, a new crown for Queen Camilla isn't being made, but I think it's only quite right that the king gets his wish that his yes. queen should wear the crown of his beloved grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, into which the Kohinoor diamond is set. And it's a, a way to basically allow the world to see this most beautiful of objects. Right. I think that was absolutely perfectly put. I mean, the sheer volume of people who could lay claim to what is no doubt a beautiful diamond is bonkers. I mean, why on earth would we want to... I mean, at some point there, realistically, if we took this to its natural conclusion, we might be not wearing it just in case we offended the Taliban, which I think really proves uh, the point that, we should, that Camilla should just wear this thing. Uh, on a slightly different note, Ray, just before I let you get going, is there also going to be any possibility of a stripped-back coronation? We had a chat about this yesterday. I'm hoping not. I said it before, I'll say it again. I want proper coronation, not Coronation Street. Well, speaking of Maharajas, I used to be a, a, a good friend of the Maharaja of Drangadra, a wonderful old man who was actually at the coronation in 1953. And uh, he was a Hindu, great scholar living in India. Nothing, it wasn't British, wasn't an Anglican. And he wrote to me uh, many years ago, about 15 years ago, and he said any attempt to tamper with the coronation service would be an act of vandalism against an item of world heritage like dismantling the Taj Mahal or Stonehenge. And I think that's puts it wonderfully. No country in the world has such an ancient service and ceremony as we do in this thousand year old 
coronation ceremony, it's as important a contribution to world civilization as the works of Shakespeare or the paintings of Constable or Turner, and I think it should be left as it is. You know, we protect our buildings with grade one listed heritage status. I think it's time we started protecting our cultural assets with grade one listed status, and I would certainly put the coronation ceremony at the top of that list.